Welcome back to the Wednesday edition of A Daily Walk. I hope you're doing good. Some people are asking, hey, where did you get that cool shirt that says USA? You know, the Olympics are right around the corner. It's incredible. We're about to see our very best go and compete. Don't you love the Olympics? I mean, it's fun to watch, to see these athletes that train for years, getting prepared for this one moment to try to win this one medal and win the gold. You know, Paul talked about uh, the Olympic Games and running races and so forth. He seemed to be a fan of sports. And he said, you know, there are people who are running for an imperishable crown or fighting for something that they can just, they can wear. But eventually it wears out. But as believers, we're running for something that's imperishable, a crown that doesn't fade away. So these shirts right here, USA, if you look closely, it says pray for the USA. And, and really, we need prayer. If you like these, well, you can go to our Calvary store and you can uh, pick one of these up. We'll ship it out to you, send it to you. And uh, it's a good talking piece for people. They look a little bit closer. Oh, pray for the United States. And you can kind of share with them about uh, the need that our nation has for prayer. Well, back to this epistle of James. Here we are in the second chapter. And we've been looking now at the importance of faith that is active. Not dead faith, not demonic faith, as James pointed out but a real living faith, a faith that is able to be demonstrated. And one of the demonstrations or the illustrations of one person who lived out their faith was Abraham. Listen, if you've never read through the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, and look at the life of Abraham, it's fantastic. I mean, just to watch Abraham learn to trust God, there are so many practical lessons there for us. Abraham was called out of his country to leave his family, to go to a place he never knew before, and he left obediently. And in that process, there were processes, or I should say promises, that God made in his life concerning things that God was going to do that took faith to believe. And he didn't even see it. So many times in Abraham's life, there was a promise made, and then there were circumstances that ran contrary to the promises being fulfilled. And yet he trusted God. Uh, there were some times. He wasn't perfect. There were moments when he faltered in his faith, when he you know, kind of didn't trust God and did his own thing and God corrected him and brought him back and there were some consequences that he had to deal with. But eventually God fulfilled his promise in that Abraham and his wife Sarah, who the Bible says in the New Testament, were as good as dead. That is physically unable to have children. God provided them with a son whose name was Isaac. By the way, Isaac means laughter. Uh, I'm sure they laughed when they realized we're pregnant and we're almost 100. <laughs> it's kind of funny to think about. But anyhow, God did this miracle. And Isaac was born and Isaac was growing up. He was the son of promise. He would receive from Abraham the inheritance and the blessing. But then God said something to, uh, to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. I said, I want you to take that son, that only son whom you love, and I want you to take him up to Mount Moriah. And I want you to offer him there as a sacrifice to me. And the Bible is very specific as to what happened. Because here's the things, folks. You've got to understand this. Genesis chapter 22. Isaac is a type of Jesus Christ. Abraham, a type of the father. The Bible says that when they went to that mountain, it was a three days journey. In other words, in the mind of Abraham, Isaac was as good as dead for three days. And then they went up to the hill. And the Bible says that Isaac carried the wood. They had a knife. They had the fire. They were making their way up the hill. Who's carrying the wood? The son. Reminds us of somebody. Who carried the wood? For us. Who went to the cross? Jesus, the son, the only son. And as they made their way up to the hill, up to Mount Moriah, Isaac finally realizes, hey, dad, uh, we got the knife, we got the wood, um, the fire, where's the sacrifice? And prophetically, Abraham said to Isaac, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And so they went up to the top of that mountain and Isaac allowed himself to be bound by his father. And right before Abraham was going to put the knife through Isaac in obedience to God's command, the Lord stopped him and said, Abraham, now I know you won't hold anything back from me. After that was over, they looked and they saw a ram caught in the bushes. Not a lamb, because the lamb was yet to come, but a ram that was caught in the bushes. God provided and they sacrificed that ram. Then they came down the hill and guess what? Isaac was alive. Do you know what happened after they came down the hill? Isaac being alive, he was as good as dead. He's now alive, just like Jesus was dead, but then he rose again, alive. But the next scene in Isaac's life was Abraham sending his servant to go and find a bride for Isaac. 
Folks, listen, after our greater than Isaac went up to the hill, the hill of Calvary, died in our place, carried the wood, had the nails go through his hands and his feet, and he took our place and took our sin upon himself and the judgment that we deserved. On the third day, he rose from the dead. And you know what he secured? You know what the Holy Spirit found for the groom, our bridegroom? A bride. Who's that? Us searched us out, sought us, brought us to himself. It is a beautiful Old Testament picture of the work of Christ found right there in Genesis chapter 22. And it's all in Abraham's life was wrapped in faith. The Bible tells us that Abraham believed, the New Testament gives us commentary that Abraham believed that if God wanted to, he could raise Isaac from the dead. I mean, that had never happened, but he was so convinced because God had blessed him with a son, with Isaac, that God, you can do anything. If you could do that, you could raise my son from the dead. I'm going up the hill. No questions asked. I'm walking by faith. I'm trusting in you. In other words, his faith was active. It did something. It responded to the word of God. And now we find him as an example for us. And that by his faith, this is verse 21, was Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see, and he's looking at this example, do you see, in looking at Abraham, that faith was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect or mature. And it's true. Abraham believed God, yes, but he believed God and did something with it. There was some evidence of that faith, and I mean radical evidence, that he trusted in God. James goes on to say in this same Line concerning Abraham, he said, was, uh, verse 22, do you see that faith is working? We got that. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto righteousness for him, and he was called the friend of God. And then he kind of sums it up. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. We are justified to the Lord by faith in the finished work of Christ. He did it. He paid it all. The price has been paid. I am justified when I trust in Christ. It means just as if I never sinned. But to the world, my faith is justified or there is evidence of my faith when they see the way that I live. To the Father, I'm justified. I believe in Christ. He is my salvation. To the rest of the world, they see my faith demonstrated by the way that I live my life in the same way that Abraham's faith was demonstrated. Oh, the father, he was justified when he, as Abraham the father, trusted in God. He was justified. He believed. God counted it to righteousness. But to the world, again, to the world, his faith was made evident by his actions. Folks, again, this emphasis is so true. Faith is not to be inoperative. It is to be active. It's not faith plus works. It's faith that works. Real, genuine faith will always manifest itself in works that follow. May the Lord use you today. May the Lord work in and through you where you're at. May the world see your genuine faith. We'll see you Friday. God bless.